To understand async API and why it's important, we first have to talk about two key concepts. Those include synchronous communication and asynchronous communication. Let's say you just downloaded a mobile app. Let's take a mobile banking app for this example. There are two sides that make up a great user experience. First, sometimes you want to engage the app. Let's say it's that time of the month to pay your bill and you need to make sure that you have enough money in your account to cover it. So you go into your account and you view your current balance. You'd expect a response that's an answer to your question. So you're asking the app, what's my current balance? Let's say that answer was $500. Let's also say you just moved into a new place and you need to update your mailing address with your bank. So again, you go into your app, you go to account details, and you update your address. Again, you're asking the app to update your address and you'd expect a, a response confirming that change was made. So your address saved. In this situation, this represents synchronous communication because both the application and the user are engaged at the same time. Other times, the app wants to engage you. So you open up your phone and you go, to your, you go to your mobile banking app and you see that there was a notification of suspicious activity detected on your account. So there was a transaction on a remote system and this information was shared with the user. It's really important in this situation for the user to be notified as soon as something happens so that they can act quickly. You wouldn't want to have to go into your account every day to see if it's safe and secure. You just want and need to be told when your account might be at risk. So for this situation, since the application and the user do not have to be engaged at the same time, it represents asynchronous communication. Event-based approaches to integration, like webhook call callbacks or publish subscribe messaging solutions, are a more efficient way to facilitating asynchronous interactions. Apache Kafka has emerged as a leading open source event streaming platform. With Apache Kafka, streams of events are published to topics that consuming applications, like our mobile banking app, can subscribe directly to for real-time access to business-critical data. And there are many uses for uh, Apache Kafka. Take our mobile banking app example. Let's say they send you a personalized promotional offer based off of your uh, account exceeding a certain limit or that you engaged in a, a level of, of high spending. That's a, a perfect example where it could be used. So now that we have this understanding of both synchronous communication and asynchronous communication, we can bring async API back into the picture uh, to understand what it is and, and, and how it's useful. So, the async API specification is used to describe message-driven API flows. It's protocol agnostic, so you can use it for APIs 
that use any asynchronous protocol. For our situation, we're, we're using it as a specification to describe events on Kafka topics. So. And this is really important because it's much like an open API. which is used as a standard for describing APIs. Events, they, they must be described in a way that captures enough information so that the user can make good use of it. Um, so essentially, so you can build those ultra-responsive applications uh, that we, we, we talked about earlier. But it doesn't stop it being described. Events they also have to be discoverable. And when they're described, it not only includes technical information, but also vital business contacts as well. So coming full circle, we can use async API specification as a standard to describe events and we can use that when we do API management, good API management, when we're managing events across the enterprise. Thank you. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. If you have questions, please drop them in the comments below.